You actually bring up the the zombie ant fungus. I enjoyed looking at this thing <laughs> as an example of one of the challenges. You mentioned viruses, but this this is a parasite. Look at that. Did you see this in the jungle? Infects ants. Actually, one of the interesting things about the jungle, everything is ephemeral. Like everything eats everything really quickly. So if you uh, if an organism dies, uh, that organism disappears. Is it yeah. Not? It's a machine that doesn't have, uh, I wanted to say, doesn't have a memory or a history, which is interesting right. given your work on history in defining a uh, living being. The jungle forgets very quickly. It wants to erase the fact that you existed very quickly. Yeah, but it can't erase it. It's just restructuring it. And I think yeah. the other thing that is really you know vivid to me about this example that you're giving is how much death is necessary for life. So I I worry a bit about um, notions of immortality and whether immortality is a good thing or not. Um, so I have sort of a broad conception that life is the only thing the universe uh, generates that actually has even the potential to be immortal. But that's as like this sort of process that you're describing where life is about memory and historical contingency and construction of new possibilities. But when you look at any instance of life, especially one as dynamic as what you're describing, it's a constant birth and death process. But that birth and death process is like the way that the universe can explore what possibilities can exist. And not everything, not every possible human or every possible ant or every possible zombie ant <laughs> or every possible tree will ever live. So it's, a, you know, it's an incredibly dynamic and creative place because of all that death. So does this thing... This is a parasite that needs the ant. So is this a living thing or is this not a living thing? So this is, yeah, <laughs> it so, just pierces the ant. I mean, it, it. Right. And I've seen a lot of this, by the way. Um, organisms working together in the jungle, like ants protecting a delicious piece of fruit. So they need the fruit. But like, if you touch that fruit, they're going to, like, the forces emerge. They're yeah. fighting you. They're defending that fruit right. to the death. It's just nature seems to find mutual benefits, right? Yeah, it does. Um, I, I think the thing that's perplexing for me about these kind of examples is, you know, effectively the ant's dead, but it's staying alive now because it's piloted by this fungus. Mm -hmm. And so that gets back to this, you know, thing that we were talking about a few minutes ago about how the boundary of life is really hard to define. So, you know, anytime that you want to draw a boundary around something and you say, this feature is the thing that makes this alive or this thing is alive on its own, there's not ever really a clear boundary. And these kind of examples are really good at showing that because it, it's like the thing that you would have thought is the living organism is now dead, except that it has another living organism that's piloting it. So the two of them together are alive in some sense, but they're you know now in this kind of weird symbiotic relationship that's taking this ant to its death. 